Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we are out in a soybean field. This is not a soybean plot, but I wanted to discuss with you something that I think is very, very important for us as food plotters. What herbicide traits do we need to be using in our food plots? So many moons ago, we would just all switch to a Roundup Ready soybean. We would spray with Roundup, everything would die, and boy, our fields looked like we were the dadgum dream farmer in America. We had it made in the shade. Anymore, we have got a long list of weeds that are not killed by Roundup, that are getting herbicide resistance. Mare's tail, pigweed, ragweed, purslane, and the list goes on and on and on and on of new weeds every single year that are getting more and more resistance to Roundup and other herbicides that we're using. Most of the soybeans grown around here are not just Roundup traded. What I'm going to do through this video, I'm going to describe this from whether you're an experienced food plotter or whether this is your first year planting a food plot, when you get through watching this video, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about on these traits. Uh, and that's my big thing on this channel is to show you guys that have experienced some things and to show you guys that have, are just starting out fresh, give you the information that you needed to be able to raise a successful food plot. Now, a lot of you are going to say, I know somebody's gonna say it, a couple weeds out there is not gonna bother an old deer and you are 1000% correct on that statement. Here is the issue with that. If you let one pigweed go to seed on you out in your food plot the next year literally the next year guys this entire field is going to be covered in them they drop hundreds of thousands of seed per one plant this is not a ah, don't worry about it kind of thing uh if it's just one it might only be three or four next year no not with pigweed and not with some of these others they are going to overtake your entire food plot to the point that you will not even be able to raise a food plot, doesn't matter what it is, uh, if you get an infestation bad enough at that point. A very important note before we get started with this is you should always read your label and make sure that anything that I'm talking about is labeled for use on your crops in your area. That's your responsibility to do that. I'm telling you general recommendations, but I am not telling you specifically in your location that you can use this or you cannot. That is going to be up to you reading the label and deciding whether you can spray these in your area. Just a side note, don't want to stay out of trouble here. So we've got four five different common traits that we have built into soybeans nowadays. We have the most common, the most heard of, which is glyphosate. That is going to be the Roundup gene. Um, that prevents that plant from being injured when you spray it with Roundup. It should kill most everything else, or that was how it was designed many moons ago. It doesn't really do that anymore. It does pretty solid on grasses, but there's a lot of weeds that are resistant to it. We also have what they call a Liberty gene. A Liberty gene is where you can spray Liberty herbicide, glufosinate. So that herbicide you can spray on a field. It will clean up some of those harder to kill weeds as long as they are small. Those are banker hours when you need to be spraying uh, Liberty. What do I mean by banker hours? I'm talking about it needs to be between 10 and two. You need to be bumping your water per acre up. Instead of using 10, you need to be using 20 or 30. You need to be spraying during the hottest times of the day and it needs to be good, hot, and sunny. You wouldn't want to spray it on a day like today where there's a lot of clouds floating by. Okay, the next one that we're going to talk about has ruffled an awful lot of feathers and there's a, I'm sure there's been a bunch of old boys rolling around in a soybean field like this in a fist fight because of it. And that is dicamba beans. I have raised dicamba beans for three years. The yields have been good. They've been, it's been a good bean for me. I have never once sprayed dicamba. Why? If you are not super familiar with the ag industry, dicamba, you can spray this field with dicamba during the day, and then all of a sudden at night, this stuff can just pick up and then just all of a sudden take off down, and, and there's no telling where it's gonna go. Um, I'm not saying it does that every single time. It has a bad name for picking up 
and then moving and hitting off target crops. What does that mean? That means if you have something that's not resistant to dicamba and you spray it and it picks up and it moves and it hits that off target crop, it's gonna kill it dead as a mackerel and guess who's gonna be responsible for it? The guy who sprayed this dicamba. That's the reason that I have never sprayed dicamba. Still is a good product. I don't recommend it because of how volatile it can be, how it picks up and it moves and it kills stuff. I just don't want any part of, of that. We have been battling these little pecker woods for about three years now. A lot of you say, what is that? That is pigweed and they are resistant to Roundup. Liberty will piss them off real good. If you catch them small and it will kill them, Roundup just it won't touch them at all. I've never sprayed dicamba, so I can't tell you on dicamba, but this weed has been a nemesis for us um, the last several years. It's really been a tough weed to control. And you can see she's looking pretty sickly right now. We just got through with an enlist spring. That's going to be the last soybean to talk about, which is an enlist. I like enlist so far this year. It's my first year using it. We did spray enlist one out here about four or five days ago. And I can see that I have, I think I've got a good kill on my pigweeds. And I think I've got a good kill on what was left of uh, my mare's tail that it were cleaning back up. But I am pretty happy so far with the enlist bean. I think I would recommend it. Now I'm going to keep you updated with this throughout the year, how this enlist does on these soybeans. The problem with pigweeds a lot of times is they don't really get going until later on in the summer. It might be June, July before they really get going and your crops may even be canopied and then all of a sudden the suckers will start showing up, especially in soybeans is where they're really, really, really bad. It's worth mentioning that you really need to take care of those pigweeds. In all honesty, guys, a few mare's tail here and there does not hurt my feelings. I will try to pull them up if I can. If I see some that was missed, I'll try to pull them up. But I'm telling you right now, if I see a pigweed that makes it by my sprayer, I make a point whether I walk, whether I take my ranger, I'll walk as far as I have to to go out there and yank that pigweed up because those things are a freaking nightmare. Take it from me. We had a creek bottom field, about 40 acres. It's a really good deer hunting farm. We caught a hammer there last year. And we had there, that was two years ago, all of a sudden we saw one pigweed out there. And when you see one, there's always more than one. You just see one. We went and pulled it up in the next year. Good. You would not freaking believe that place right there. But we sprayed in list down there the other day and I went down there yesterday to look. It looks like we got a good kill. And we talk about money. Yes, there is some money difference between, um, say, bottom of the barrel, a roundup, a straight roundup bean, and that's it. Um, I think I got some of those as low as, I don't know, 30, I want to say 32, $35 last year a bag. Uh, and these enlist beans were, I don't know, 58, 57, 58 a bag. In all reality, it's not a gigantic difference. Uh, you're talking 20, 20 bucks a bag, maybe. But to me, as it looks right now, traded soybeans are where it's at to keep your fields clean. You can see behind me, the field's clean. This is something that I think is really important to a lot of food plotters, because honestly, as a farmer, all these different chemicals and all these different traits can get really, really confusing. Um, and I can only imagine a food plotter who doesn't deal with this kind of stuff every single day, how confusing all this stuff would be um, and trying to discern what type of traded soybeans to plant, what not type to plant. One big issue with the dicamba, last my knowledge, you had to go take a special class even to be able to spray dicamba and get a license. There's a cutoff date for when you can spray dicamba. There used to be, I'm assuming there still is. And if you're gonna try to spray dicamba, deadlines are very, very important to you and you need to be paying attention to them. You need to be licensed to be able to do that. You don't wanna be liable for somebody uh, somebody's crop if you spray it and kill it. All these things are really important and, and I'm hopeful that this video has been helpful to you, that you have 
uh, understood what I'm talking about when I'm talking about these chemical traits that are built into these plants, which ones you should use. But I will keep you guys updated with uh, which ones before 2024 rolls around, I will put out another video explaining these, telling you the luck that we had with the Enlist, whether I think it's worth it or not. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Smash the like and subscribe button if you hadn't already.